Sorry, Eugene, can you just show that, show that graph at the bottom for just a few more seconds? Yep. Thank you. We okay? Let me know when you're done. That's good, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me know. So now we are going to do from point A to point B, right? Uh, let me highlight again. So these are all constant. Okay. So from point A to point B, we are going to get 0 x to 0 0.8 meters. Okay. So this is like, this is, this is a range. When it's a range, we know that we are going to form what? You're going to form equation. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Okay. What, what do I mean by uh, zero? So I'm going to construct the free body diagram. All right. So this is still your point A. From here to here, this is your x distance. Okay. So we are going to apply uh, static analysis. Okay, we are going to apply static analysis. From left to right. Right. So by looking at this diagram over here, now we know how our shear force and bending moment direction should be. So this is V as a function of X, M as a function of X, okay? Now over here, right, this will be 50 times 10 to the power 3 multiplied by X, right? Because it's an X distance, it's a variable now. And the distance from here to here is equal to X over 2, okay? Wait, 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 that is a very bad x. Okay, so it is x over 2. Now, any idea why? Anyone? So remember, we, 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 we record this, right? I'll, I'll explain why down here. So if it's an evenly distributed load, If this distance is L, right, and omega is the is the tongue tight again, is your magnitude of your distributed load, right? So the equivalent load will be equal to what? Omega L, right? And the distance from here to here is L over 2, right? So now, eh, what happened? Okay, so this is this is L. So now if I'm going to change the L to an X, okay, so what does it look like now? Everything the same. So change it to omega X, the distance from here to here is X over 2, okay? Now, what if now we have a gradient load? So this is my omega. This distance is L, right? So our equivalent load is, right? Our equivalent load now will be, so from here to here, right? So this is our equivalent load. So our equivalent load is half multiplied by omega multiplied by L. The distance from here to here, right, is, is equal to uh, L over 3. Is that clear now? Okay, but the distance for this case is not, is not, uh, is not uh, omega X. Okay, it's not. Okay, so I will not form that yet. Okay, later on, then I teach you guys how to, how to form the, equi uh, uh, the equivalent load for triangle, okay, or gradient distributed load, right? 
But we are very sure if 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 that's the case, right? In terms of x, right? The distance from here to here is still x over three. Yeah, that's for sure. But the value over here, this is where the equivalent load will apply, and the equivalent load is not so simple like half base time height. Okay, so equivalent load. Okay, I will teach later on a triangular distributed load how to form the equation okay right so now so you understand why is it x over 2 now right okay and then multiply by x so this is some mention about forces in the y direction is equal to 0 so it's equal to 50 times 10 to the power 3 okay multiply by x Okay, so it's minus minus v as a function of x is equal to zero, right? So now v as a function of x, we have equal to um, minus fifty times ten to the power three x. Okay, so that is our first equation. Now I'm going to write out the equation first, then I'm going to explain the trend of the equation. Okay. So the next thing now, when I when I was an undergrad, I I I I find that this is very hard to accept, right? So if we think about static analysis, if we have a distributed load is coming down, right? To prevent the the structure from falling, v x actually has to go the the opposite direction. It has to go upwards, right? If not, the entire block will have uh uh, uh will have a what a uh, uh, free flow drop because both forces are going down. Okay, that's what I thought when when I was undergrad. Okay, my prof just say uh, uh, this is how we do it. Okay, but there was no explanation of why. Okay, so that is why this is so critical. Okay, it is a notation that we use and it's not based on physics. Okay, it's a notation like y positive is always uh, more, negative is always less, right? It's like a chicken and egg issue now, okay? So that, that is why for right to left, okay, these are the direction of the moments, okay? Right. The next thing we, we, we're going to form is we're going to do some mention about moment. Okay, some mention about moment. In the z direction, and it's a variable x. Okay, so what does this mean is we are taking the moment at this point. Okay, I'm going to change the uh, color. We are taking the moment at that point. You have to know where the moment is taken or not your direction will flip. Yes or no? If you did not know, you thought your, your, your moment is taken here, which is the wrong. Right, so and everything from clockwise will become anti-clockwise. Anything clockwise will become uh, anti-clockwise. Okay, so you have to know where the data is taken. Okay, so, so we are going to look at the 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 data or uh, the moment now. Okay, so the fifty times ten to the power three, that is the distance, and then you multiply by x, right? So this is the equivalent load. Then you multiply by x over 2 again. And it happened to be positive because relative to the red dot, it is positive. It is anticlockwise. Okay. So plus by m as a function of x, this is equal to 0. So from here, we know that m as a function of x is equal to minus 25 times 10 to the power 3 x squared. Okay. So this is our equation number two. Okay. So so going back to our table now, right? So we know, right? We know that the first Vx or, or the range between A to B is equal to minus 50 times 10 to the power 3, right? X. And this is equal to minus 25 times 10 to the power 3 x squared okay 
So what does this actually mean? Okay, as I say, this topic is not so much like, okay, this is the equation. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. You have to interpret what does it actually means. Okay, why? Because some of you have the experience to, to construct shear force and bending moment diagrams already. Okay, some of you don't. So how do you know you're, construct, you're constructing the shear force and bending moment uh, diagram correctly? So the only way to know that it's correct is mathematically. Okay, and, and, and I learned this maybe four, five years ago, is sometimes, okay, without experience, how do you know that your answer is right or wrong? And the only way to prove this is mathematically. That, that is why mathematicians are always very miserable bastards. <laughs> okay? If mathematically they cannot prove it, they get, are so bitter and miserable people. Because if they cannot prove it mathematically to their, to their world or to their context, it does not make sense. Okay? <laughs> So, so what I'm trying to uh, tell you guys is this, okay? Uh, I'm not doing uh, racial profiling, okay? But if you were to marry a mathematician, be prepared, okay? Because if there's no logic for it, they have to fight, okay? <laughs> I know quite a few mathematicians. They are miserable like hell. <laughs> anyway, right. Coming back to where we are, so what does this actually mean? What does equation one mean? Okay, so if you look at equation number one, let me explain the equation now. So later on, when we write more equations, you, 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 you know what it actually means, okay? So equation number one, okay, equation number one, what we have is a linear equation. Right, we have a linear equation. So this linear equation, the the parent function is y is equal to mx plus c. Okay. So if you look at what our equation is, so v as a function of x. So v is our response. Yes or no? Our, our vertical, our vertical axis. All right. Then we have minus fifty times ten to power three x, and our y-intercept is equal to zero. Right, our y-intercept is equal to zero. So what we have is this term over here, right? This term over here is equivalent to our what? M. And we know that M is the gradient and C is the what? Y-intercept. Right? C is the y-intercept. So in this context, we know that what does negative uh, gradient means? Negative gradient means that the slope is coming down this way, right? Positive gradient means the slope is going up. Okay. So if if if, if you look at uh, our diagram, okay, if you were to construct our shear force diagram, so this is your v, and the distance is uh, zero. And this is where your point B is, right? You know your shear force diagram will be coming down this way first. Okay, you know that it will be coming down this way, right? Then the next thing we look is we are going to look at equation number two. So equation number two, if you look at it, it is a second order. polynomial function, right? So is y, or not y, yeah, y is equal to a x squared plus by b x plus c, okay? Now, for this case, what does a mean? So a, if it is uh, positive, right, if it's positive, it's going to be smiling face, right? The trend of the curve will be smiling face. If A is negative, it will become what? Set face, okay? And then as usual, C is the Y-intercept. 
Okay. So if you look at our equation, so V as a function of X is equal to minus 50 times 10 to the power 3. Okay. Uh, is it X or X squared? Okay, no, 35 